Good afternoon to all the members of the floor, the jury, Dr. Puja Puri, Dr. Gunwan Dirato, Dr. Mohini Chandra, and I am Prakash from Malaysia, working in Newcastle University, and my topic for today will be an investigation to improve cleaning procedures on post-mortem table from cross contaminations. So this will be the investigation to determine the cleanliness of the autopsy table. So how clean is from the cross contaminations? Due to our COVID pandemic, the mock is not accessible as much as it should for my research. So we had, I had to recreate the autopsy scenario. So it can be uh, one of its kind where we'll be doing a postmortem outside the mock. But before that, we, uh, before we get to see the spot, let us see the source of the contaminations we encountered each day in autopsy. So basically first will be the biological. The biological contaminations during the autopsy are the major disaster accounted by the forensic personnel. Microbes plays a vital part as it cannot be visualized by the naked eye. So there are several high risk of hazards that the health workers in the autopsy room can be exposed such as the pulmonary tuberculosis, human uh, HIV, as well as the hepatitis B, which can be appear in form of microbes during postmortem procedures. For forensic laboratory analysis, samples are taken by swabs from the postmortem table, draining board, irregular instruments, and cultured on the nutrient uh, blood agar, which was noted to be heavily contaminated. The samples are tested prior and autopsy procedures and noted to have lesser contamination compared to the during and after the postmortem procedures. The usage of gloves and apron are also accounted for heavy contamination of bacteria. If these materials are not being disposed properly, they will be a major causative of infection, which will be involve personnel due to increase of uh, contamination levels during the postmortem procedures. Apart from microbes, DNA also can be transferred from the previous dead body on foreign source to the current bodies where the cleaning of the table after the postmortem procedures are not conducted correctly. So in a forensic challenge where the these steps of contaminations can be questions when exogenous DNA are being found. The second one will be the chemical. The chemical contaminations can be encountered in most cases during postmortem procedures. The usage of formaldehyde during the handling of formalin mixed organs or procedures, um, and also uh, during the handling of um, specimen which are not washed properly, could give rise to the irritants of mucous membrane such as skin, eyes, and in long term of, uh, in, and in the long term it can cause types of all types of cancers. It can also give rise to acute irrit uh, irritants and chronic results such as laryngitis and bronchitis. Additionally. Contaminated dead bodies due to ingestion of chemicals by the dead through self poisoning or industrial accidents. The main component of the chemical contamination were a mixture of inhalations and ingestions of toxic compounds, mainly domestic cleaners, and the other potent chemical contains uh, cyanide poisoning, which can be inhaled, ingested as well through the uh, intact skin. Personnel who had performed an autopsy on chemical contaminated body. Uh, can ingest a cyanide, which can be exposed to a high risk. A blood cyanide concentration could be elevated to 38.4 millimeter, where the normal level will be a 7.6 millimeter. The last one will be the air contaminations. Basically, this air contaminations is uh, least taken into the consideration because usually uh, post-mortem procedures always involve personnel in a healthcare system which will be following the SOPs, the standard operation procedures by wearing the proper personal protective and also using sterilized equipments. But they are still exposed to the air contamination where the air samples are being tested using BioMurks Air Ideal Bio Collector and around 250 liter of air samples twice a day, which shows that there are selective bacterial growth, such as the uh, triplicase soil in the triplicase soy agar and also uh, some of the detect, it also detected sulfide reducing anaerobes. Okay. The methods using in testing the presence of contaminations, there are two. One is a presumptive test. A presumptive test, we can see here, phenolphthalein test, or it is known as the uh, Castle-Meyer test. And second one will be the luminol test. So uh, usually in the uh, our 
in we can able to see a lot of uh, shows uh, CSS shows where they will be using this luminal test as well. So this test, a uh, custom made test, uh, shows that the presence of hemoglobin being through the breakdown of uh, reaction of phenolphthalein reagents to phthalein by zinc and regenerated by oxygen and it liberated from the reddish color. So you can able to see the color uh, differences there, the positive and the negative. This test is very delicate where it can also uh, mimic errors from other sources. So uh, and one more thing will be the luminol. So luminol has been preferred over the 40 years of test and it also tests for presence of hemoglobin. The best test is will be the confirmatory test where it is known as uh, one of the uh, confirmatory tests will be Takayama test. So the Takayama test, which contains glucose like none other reagents, the stains will be changed its color from brown to red and begins to crystallize soon after the cooling. So the visualization of crystals under the microscope could confirm the presence of blood. But in certain locations, it can also give false negative in the experiment, such as ammonium sulfide was being used instead of glucose, which can make a cherry red color and of the heme chromogen, chromogen crystals. And another, the best part I would like to discuss will be the Tishman test. The Tishman test here is uh, one of the oldest method, which is still preferred due to its simplicity. It is known uh, the hemin in the blood, which is the prosthetic group of the hemoglobin can be visualized in crystal forms. Okay, crystal forms. And um, basically these uh, crystal forms will be heated up while mixing with the concentrated acetic acid. This one I will be showing you in one video in two minutes only. And the last one will be the human hemoglobin immunochromatography test, which literature is also described possibility of identify human blood by human hemoglobin and to differentiate other species such as the animal blood. So this will be the video for one minute. So the methodology of the research is to get an ethical approval because usually for the ethical approval will be done if we are, any research is involving a DNA. So we will have to get an ethical approval. Then in my research, I applied the blood of on the stainless steel table and let it dry for a period of time and wash it by washing materials, which will be tested. So this will be the uh, negative control and this will be the positive control. So in negative control, there is no blood and a positive control, it has all the bits uh, around the, the tables. And once I already let it dry, I will be using each uh, five cotton buds to, uh, to do the swipe according to the diagram here. So A to B, B to C, D, E, and to make sure I covered all the places. So once I already done the swipe, I will try to do the Tishman test. And once I have done the Tishman test, I will be visualizing in the microscope to ascertain after the each washing. So here are the results here. 
when I did a water wash only without using any uh, particular detergents, it shows all the positive means that there is a contamination. So under the microscope, you can able to see a few of the diagrams later. And this one will be the powder detergent. So in the three hours, there is only two particular uh, part where it is negative. So others are positive. So these are the diagrams. So for the water wash, you can able to see the amount of contaminations. And for the powder detergent wash, you can see the part of the contaminations. Whereas for the liquid detergent also, it has some contaminations, but when we are using the powder detergent plus with the household bleach brushing, there are no contaminations. So in these things, I would like to conclude in these studies, the cleaning method which will be involving the combinations of powder detergent with bleach was shown to be the most effective method to remove the biological contaminant, namely the blood residues. As to compare to other methods, this combination of detergent and bleach has successfully achieved 100% free from contaminations and due to the presence of blood traces. In other words, zero cross contamination had achieved. So I also had uh, recommended this to my Malaysian uh, Medical Council and a few recommendations for future research as well. So I would like to conclude my presentations and thank you.